Staying hidden online or when doing something like hacking is really important for hackers. We use different methods to stay anonymous, like setting up proxy chains. Proxy chains are great for staying hidden while browsing or doing attacks. In Kali Linux, we can configure proxy chains to achieve this anonymity. Today, we're going to see how to do that. Before we start, let's talk about what is proxy chain. Proxy chains are like a team of proxies that redirect your internet connection to different servers using various protocols like HTTP, HTTPS, SOC4, and SOC5. This not only secures your connection, but also makes it really hard for anyone watching to know what you're doing online or where you're located. Proxy Chains sets up a strong chain of proxies that act as a middleman between your device's IP and the final destination's IP, hiding your identity effectively. Many people think VPN are safer than proxy chains, but the truth is VPN often have DNS leaks, making them less secure compared to proxy chains. Let's look at how to set up proxy chains. Proxy Chains comes already installed on Kali Linux. If you're wondering where the proxy chains configuration file is, to find it, you can use this command. Locate proxy chains. Hit enter. Then this, the first one, is the configuration file. Once you find the directory, copy it, and then use your preferred text editor like Nano or Jedit, which you can install if you haven't already with pseudo privileges. Paste the directory and press enter. Let's see each line now. Before we begin, remember that the hash signifies a comment. To enable or disable a feature, simply add or remove the hash accordingly. This line simply indicates the version of proxy chains being used. There are four types of proxy chains. Dynamic chain, strict chain, round robin chain, and random chain. Let's break down each type. Although the comments provide excellent explanations, let's simplify things for better understanding. Let's start with dynamic chain. As the comment says, dynamic chain involves connecting through a series of proxies listed in a chain. At least one proxy in the chain must be online for the connection to work, as dead proxies are automatically bypassed. If all proxies in the list are not online, EINTR will be returned to the application. This means that if proxy chains cannot establish a connection through all specified proxies, it will signal this as an interrupted system call error to the application that's using proxy chains. Now, for instance, imagine you have proxy A, proxy B, and proxy C in your list. With dynamic chain, your connection might go through proxy A first. If proxy A is offline, it will skip to proxy B and so on, ensuring a continuous connection through an available proxy in the chain. Moving on to the second type, strict chain operates according to its name. All proxies are chained strictly in the order they're listed, and every proxy in the chain must be online for the connection to proceed. To illustrate, consider a scenario where you have proxy X, proxy Y, and proxy Z in your list. With strict chain, the connection will always start with proxy X, then move to proxy Y, and finally to proxy Z. If any of these proxies are offline, the connection won't proceed through the chain. Next, let's discuss the round-robin chain, which is described as follows. Each connection will be done via chained proxies of chain len length, with all proxies chained in the order they appear in the list. At least one proxy must be online to maintain the chain dead proxies are skipped. The start of the current proxy chain is the proxy after the last proxy in the previously invoked proxy chain. If the end of the proxy chain is reached while looking for proxies, start at the beginning again. In simpler terms, imagine you have proxy 1, proxy 2, and proxy 3 in your list, and the chain length is set to 2. The connection will start with proxy 1, and then move to proxy 2. If either of these proxies becomes unavailable, the chain skips the dead proxy and continues. Once it reaches the end of the list, it starts again from the beginning, maintaining the chain's continuity. Lastly, let's cover random chain, which is explained as follows. Each connection will be made through a randomly selected proxy or proxy chain, depending on chain len from the list. This option is particularly useful for testing your intrusion detection system IDs. In simpler terms, suppose you have proxy A, proxy B, and proxy C in your list. With random chain, the connection will randomly select one of these proxies each time a connection is made. This randomness helps simulate various connection scenarios, making it ideal for testing the effectiveness of your IDs. As you can see here, it's mentioned here that when chain len equals 2, what we discussed in random chain or round robin chain 
This parameter determines the length of the chain. This setting is crucial in defining how proxies are linked together for your connections. For example, in random chain with chain len equals 2 and proxies proxy x, proxy y, and proxy z, the connection may randomly select proxy y after proxy x for the chain. Here quiet mode, indicated in proxy chain's configuration as quiet mode, is an option that suppresses output from the proxy chain's library. When you enable quiet mode, proxy chains won't display any output or messages related to its operations, making it run silently in the background. This can be useful in situations where you don't want proxy chains to generate any log or console output, especially in automated or scripted tasks where excessive output could be distracting or unnecessary. By using quiet mode, proxy chains operates without generating additional noise or information unless there is an error or something noteworthy that requires attention. Before we proceed to the next line, let's take a look at an example to understand how it works. We've discussed four types of proxy chains, correct? Now, let me ask you a question. Which proxy type are we using here? It's the strict chain, right? Simple. As you can see, there's no hash in front of strict chain indicating that we are currently using it. So, what if we want to switch to another proxy chain? It's simple just add hash before strict chain and then move on to the proxy type you want. For example, if you want to use round robin chain, go to round robin chain and remove the hash. Now we are using round robin chain. If you want to use quiet mode, simply remove the hash. Easy, right? Okay, let's talk about proxy DNS requests. This is proxy DNS configuration, emphasizing its role in preventing DNS leaks that could expose your DNS queries and compromise your privacy. This line enables the proxy DNS feature in proxy chains. It's the recommended method and utilizes the proxy chain's four style to handle remote DNS requests. Proxy chain spawns a thread internally to handle DNS requests. When a DNS query is made, proxy chain assigns an IP from an internal list configured via remote DN subnet. This method is easy to set up and generally fast, but it may encounter issues on systems with buggy libraries or complex software like web browsers, potentially leading to crashes. This line is commented out disabled, representing an older method ProxyChain's 3.1 style that uses the proxy resolve script to proxy DNS requests. It requires proxy resolve in your system's dollar path and relies on a dynamically linked dig binary. While this method might be slower than proxy DNS and lacks support for onion URLs, it could be more compatible with certain complex software like web browsers. This method utilizes the ProxyChain's 4 daemon process, ProxyChain's 4 daemon to serve remote DNS requests. It's similar to the threaded proxy DNS method, but requires the ProxyChain's 4 daemon to be running on the specified address. One advantage is that it doesn't use malloc threads, making it compatible with complex, async, unsafe software. However, failing to start the daemon before using this method can cause the process to hang. Enabling proxy DNS is essential for routing DNS requests through the proxy chain, enhancing your anonymity and preventing DNS leaks. The choice of method whether it is proxy DNS, proxy DNS old, or proxy DNS daemon depends on factors like setup ease, speed, compatibility with software, and system stability. Alright, let's jump into the important part, finding proxies and how to use them. Now, let's talk about where to find these proxies. Wondering where to get free proxies? Just fire up your browser and search for free proxy list. There are plenty of websites that provide them. For now, let's check out the first one that pops up. Here, you'll find a bunch of free proxy chains. First, identify the type whether it's HTTP, SOX4, or SOX5. And note down the port it uses. Copy the IP address. Next, head back to the proxy chain configuration. Hit enter at the end of the line. Ignore this line, it is related to Tor, I will just remove it. Then type the protocol. Followed by space. Then paste the IP address. Space again. And type the port. Repeat this for as many proxies as you want. I'll speed through this process and add around 5 proxies. And voila, you're ready to rock the internet incognito. Now let's quickly check which proxy chain type we're using. As you can see, we're currently on strict chain. While it's fine to use this type, remember that it requires all proxies to be online. Since we're not sure if all the proxies are working, let's switch to dynamic chain. 
I'll comment out strict chain, remove the hash from dynamic chain, and we're good to go. Press Ctrl plus S to save, then close this window. Now, let's test it out. I'll open the terminal, then launch Firefox with proxy chains. All you need to do is type, proxy chains Firefox. Once it's open, let's check my IP address. Great, this isn't my real IP address, so it's working. I hope it works for you too. Remember, always prefix your command with proxy chains, whether you're scanning with nmap or anything else. So, for example, it would be proxy chains nmap. And there you have it, your cloak of anonymity in action. I hope I've explained proxy chains well enough. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, don't forget to subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. But if you're not interested in learning, no pressure to subscribe. Have a great time and see you next time.